It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program today. We have a wonderful message on words that move mountains or the power of words or we call it the speaking part of faith. Of course, Kenneth E. Hagin or Dad Hagin said you'll have to do three times more teaching on the Mm -hmm. saying part of faith than you do on the believing part. In other words, Jesus said you'll have what you You say. say. Mm -hmm. The importance of your words, not just at church, but your words at home, even the way you talk to yourself and the power of the Word of God in your mouth. And I heard Reinhard Bonnke say many years ago, He said, the Lord said to him, my word in your mouth is just as powerful as my word in my mouth. Amen. In other words, the spirit of faith, you believe and you speak, and even the devil don't care what you believe if you'll be quiet about it. In other words, the moment you take the word and put it in your mouth, I call that mouth to mouth resuscitation (laughs) from God. You breathe in the faith of God and the word of God, and then you speak that out. And your mountain needs to hear your yes, voice. Yes. In other words, you have authority as a believer. So we're going to have a good time studying faith. And, and mountains are going to be moving. And the scenery is changing. Change. That means yes, mountains right. are moving. And I encourage you to get the messages from today and get the books and stuff. It'll be a tremendous blessing to you. So we want to go right into the service and talk about words that move mountains. All right, if you have your Bible, open up Mark 11, 22, Mark 11, 23. And uh, this morning we're going to talk about faith and specifically the speaking or the saying part of faith. Mark 11, 22, 23, you're very familiar with these verses. Mark 11, 22, Jesus said to have faith in God. Have faith in God. Then in verse 23, he tells you exactly how faith works. Why is it important how faith works? Well, because uh, it is by faith that you access the grace of God. Amen. 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 God is a faith God. Uh, John said that we overcome by our faith. Amen. So it's important to understand how faith works, and Jesus makes it so simple, you actually need a theologian to get confused about it. I said, let's try that again. I said, Jesus makes it so simple that even if you're a slow learner, don't look at nobody right now. I said, Jesus (laughs) makes it so simple. (laughs) Let's try it again. I said, Jesus is going to make it so simple. Come on. Even your kids and grandkids can get it. I mean, Jesus makes it simple. So in Mark 11, 23, here's what Jesus said about faith. He might be an expert, right? Jesus said, here's how faith works. He said, verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Other translation says, do not entertain doubt. That don't mean doubt won't stop by, just don't entertain it. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, these words literally changed my whole life, my whole family, really, because we were raised in church and we had been saved and even filled with the Holy Spirit. But Dad Hagen came and taught on the subject of faith. Actually, he said the Lord told him, don't preach on faith, teach on faith. Teach my people how faith works. And he said the experiences you've had, he said I'm going to use those to teach others how to receive from God by faith and overcome by faith. So Dad Hagen taught on the subject of faith and honestly, I listened to him Oh, I mean, from the time I was eight years old, and then finally 17 years old, I ended up getting put in jail. Then my, my parents shipped me off to East Africa, you know. And so, uh, 
<laughs> I spent a long time in East Africa. And uh, actually, I tell people, you know, the National Geographic said the DNA of the whole human race originated in Africa. So see, that makes me African-American. So don't be talking about my people. All right. So that means all of us Africans, right? Well, the Garden of Eden must have been in Africa. So, so I love Africa. One of my favorite places in the world to go is, in, is Africa, East Africa, West Africa, South Africa. So um, uh, <laughs> while I was there, finally at 17 years old, uh, I started paying attention. All right. You know, and I started listening to not only I knew a lot about the Bible, but I did not know how to receive or how to mix faith with the Word of God. So Dad Hagen taught on that subject, and at 17, whoo, man, that lit me up. Mark 11:23, because he said, whosoever. I thought, well, that includes just everybody. Yes. That means you don't have to be specially talented. You don't have to be specially good looking. You don't have to have a lot of money. All you got to do is be a whosoever. Yes. You don't have to have a Ph.D. Come on, you just got to be a whosoever. In other words, Jesus said, anybody can do this. Anybody can do this, right? And he said, and the way faith works, he said, is whosoever shall say. So when it comes to the subject of faith, the first thing that Jesus said about faith is your faith must move your mouth. In other words, speaking is the initial act of faith. Amen. I said speaking is the initial act of faith. Absolutely, when your faith speaks, your voice print will get on everything you're talking about. Yes. Come on, my kids got my voice print on them. Come on, your checkbook will have your voice print on it. Your job will have your voice print on it. In other words, they actually say that your voice print is as true a measure of your identity as your fingerprint or your eye print, your voice print. So what kind of a voice print are you leaving? And the Lord said to me, if you're silent, you'll lose by default. So that means it's not just important what you say, it's also important what you don't say. So the Lord said to me many times, he said, what are you going to say about that? I said, well, I don't feel like saying nothing about it. He said, well, you're going to have to say something about it. You're going to have to say something about it. For your faith to influence our, that situation, you're going to have to say something about it. So when he said, whosoever shall say, that's the initial act of faith. Right? Say. And then he ends with, whatsoever he saith. In other words, he puts the speaking part of faith on the beginning and on the end and the middle. Believe those things which he saith, it shall come to pass. Amen. So they goes from a whosoever to what? Whatsoever. In other words, this will work for anybody. And he literally says, your faith will work on whatsoever. Anything. In other words, everything in this world responds to words. Amen. Everything. I said everything in this world responds to words. Now let me show you something else real quickly here. That's why in the New Testament, he talks about your voice and lifting your voice. And in church a lot of times, we do a lot of clapping. We say praise the Lord and clap. Well, there's nothing wrong with clapping, so I won't make you stop clapping. But never let your clapping be a substitute for your voice. Amen. All right, let's try this out over here. I said, come on now. I said, never let your clapping be a substitute for your voice because the authority of the believer, that authority is in your voice. I said, that authority is in your voice. Amen. 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 So when he said, whosoever shall say, now, I learned this from Kenneth E. Hagin because I'm not that smart. You know, I just learned from him. You don't have to be smart. Just hang out with somebody who is smart. Right? So I learned this from Dad Hagin. And he said that he had read the New Testament through 150 times. 
and 150 times, after reading it 150 times, he said one day he was praying in the church around the altar, had his Bible open to Ephesians 1 prayer. Y'all know the Ephesians 1 prayer. Ephesians 1 prayer, and he said, I pray that diligently every day, and that is this prayer, that God, Father God, I'm asking you to give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God that the eyes of my understanding would be enlightened, that I may know. Come on, God wants you to know. Yes. That I may know what is the hope of your calling and what is the riches of the glory of your inheritance and what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe according to the working of your mighty power which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world World, but also in that which is to come. And you put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Thank you, Lord. So he said he's praying those prayers diligently in Ephesians chapter 1. He said, and the Lord spoke to him and said this to him. Did you ever notice in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he said, I refer to the saying part of faith three times and the believing part only once. He said, no, I never noticed that. So he turned in his Bible to Mark eleven twenty three, 23, and he counted it. Well, concerning the believer. Now, there's one say in the beginning where Jesus said, Verily I say, but in reference to the believer, the saying part. So he counted it. Verily I say unto you. Now, one, whosoever shall say, one. Talking about the believer. Whosoever shall say, one. Unto this mountain be removed, be cast, he shall not down, and believe those things which he say it. That's two. Shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say it. Three. He said, I never noticed it. He said, and I read the New Testament through 150 times and never noticed that the saying part of faith was in there three times and the believing part was only in there one. Mm. Come on. wow. Now, I don't know if you're on your 100th time or your 50th time. In other words, there's a lot of stuff you can miss. Come on. If you don't pay attention. And the Holy Spirit wants to show you some stuff in this next 12 months that's going to bring your faith to a whole new level. Come on, to receive from God and to exercise your authority as a believer. Now listen close. Here's the way the Lord said it to me because I was literally fascinated with Mark 11, 23. But here's what the Lord said to me. He said, Mark 11, 23, or the authority of the believer, listen now, is not just available it is necessary. All right, I'll try this out of way. You know why? Because sometimes while you're teaching, people go, that's nice. I'll go ahead and put this aside because I, I want to know that's available. No, he said, it's not just available. It is necessary for you as a believer to exercise your authority because there are some mountains that you will face in your life and some giants that you will face in your life, and God ain't going to do nothing about it. Jesus already did everything he's going to do about it, and now he gave you the authority, so you're going to have to do something about it. Amen. 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 So he said, now, when it comes to this, y'all still with me here? Yes. He said, when it comes to faith, he said, when it comes to faith and how faith works, the Lord said to him, you'll have to do three times more teaching on the saying part. Amen. You'll have to do three times more teaching on the saying part than you do on the believing part. Here's what the Lord said to him. Because he had been teaching on the same part. He had also been teaching on the importance of the confession of your faith. In other words, faith must have a confession. That's actually how you got saved is the word of faith. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart. God raised him from the dead. And that's how you got saved. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In other words, you believe. And you said, and that's how salvation was made real to you, that Jesus is Lord. In other words, the saying part of faith, the words, 
Actually, in Acts chapter 11, verse 14, it says that uh, Peter went over there and he said, and the angel said, and he's going to come and tell you words whereby you and your whole household shall be saved. Come on, amen. In other words, people are saved by words. Come on, the angel said, he's going to come tell you some words. And by these words, you'll be saved and your whole household will be saved. By these words. He's going to tell you words that's going to deliver you, heal you, bless you. He's going to give you a, a whole new kind of vocabulary. He's going to teach you a language of faith. Amen. Amen. Now, I just saw a lady from uh, Kenya. We were at Brother uh, Copeland's meeting, and a lady from Kenya. So anytime I see anybody from East Africa, immediately I do my, my Swahili stuff. You know, Habari Ghani, Bonasafiwe, Mungu Akubariki. I'm, I'm running through my Swahili, and uh, oh, she just lit up, you know, because that's her, her original language, so she lit up. Well, in, when I was in East Africa, I'm in Tanzania with a missionary, so I'm trying to learn Swahili. So I'm walking down the street, and I met a young man walking down the street. So when I met him walking down the street, I said, Habadigani, uh, how you doing? I'm, I'm really proud. I'm able to say a few things. Mzuri sana, you know, and then you can say, you know, Habadiza, you know, your family and all that. So I'm trying to use that. So I said, Habadigani, and he said, uh, good morning, sir. How are you doing? So he, he threw English at me, right? Well, I'm downtown Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, or somewhere like that. So I'm walking down. How are you doing, sir? Good morning. So here's what, what I found out. He said, here in East Afri Africa, we call English the money language. He said, that means every mama, every daddy wants their children to go to school to learn English. Because the moment they learn English, come on, Swahili is a national language, and there's many other languages, but the national language is Swahili. He said, but the moment they learn English, their whole economy is opened up to be blessed and to prosper. So we must learn English, the money language. So if you're wondering why you came to church, Jesus said, I'm going to teach you a new language. Yes. And you learn to speak this language. Yeah. It's going to change your economy. Yes, God. Come on, it's going to affect your health. Yeah. It's going to change your family. Come on, it's going to affect your future if you'll learn this new language. Yeah. All right. So then if you're, you're wanting to learn a new language, they say the best way to learn it is to immerse yourself in that language. So in the house, the missionary said, we're not going to talk any English in the house. We don't speak Swahili. So that means if you want to eat whatever you want to do, you're going to have to learn Swahili. Yes. So you immerse yourself in that language, right? So they said that you can tell when you actually learn a language is when you quit thinking your original language and then speaking. Yeah. But you really know a language when you actually start thinking in that language. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, now listen, one more thing. They said, but when you really have learned another language, you actually dream in that language. Wow. Come on now, I just want somebody to start dreaming in another language. In the gospel, in the language of redemption, and also in the language of faith. Amen. Amen. So Dad Hagen said the Lord told him, you'll have to do three times more teaching on the speaking or the saying part of faith. Our people won't get it because he said he is already teaching on it, but he thought many preachers are not preaching on this. He said, so I don't want to go overboard. So he said, I was going to back down, and the Lord told him, no, you'll have to multiply it. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sure glad he stuck with it. Now, I'm going to tell you this, because here's what the Lord told me. I've been listening to him for a long time. 17, turned my life around, and then 18, 19, 20. Well, when I got to be probably about 25, I thought, well, I know this stuff pretty good. All right. 
all right? And it had blessed me. So I went to hear Dad Hey, He started teaching on Mark eleven twenty three. 23. When he did, in my mind, I kind of just started going, I hope everybody else is paying attention. <laughs> Y'all never thought that? I'm sure glad so-and-so's here. I hope, I hope they're paying attention to what he's teaching right now because this is very important stuff. I hope these people here, I, I see people, it's going to help all these people. And the Lord said to me, <laughs> Come on, you may have read the New Testament through 150 times, and you may have read Mark 11:23 23 150 times. But the Lord said to me, he said, if you'll pay attention, Come on. I'm going to show you some stuff out of Mark 11:23 23 you have never seen before. How many believe God could show you some things about faith? Come on, let you just go. And if you make a little adjustment, Praise the Lord. I said, sometimes just a little adjustment can make a big difference. Now, I use the illustration because years ago, NASA launched a communication satellite that there's $150 million invested in that satellite, $150 million. But when they got it out there into outer space, which I don't know that much about, it didn't work. So it's $150 million invested, and it don't work. And if it worked properly, then there would be $2 billion worth of income that would come from that communication satellite, if it worked. But $150 million's out there, and it don't work. So they said, well, why don't it work? And here's what they said. They said, because it's not in exactly the right orbit. It's, in a, it's a little bit out of orbit. I thought, I thought, now, isn't that ridiculous? Because, I mean, for me, I thought, if you just got it out there somewhere, it ought to work. But that thing had to be in the right orbit. So to get that thing in the right orbit, they had some little rockets attached to the side of it, fired them up, moved that satellite into the right orbit. The moment it got in the right orbit, it started receiving and transmitting and $2 billion generating. Now, I know some of y'all saved. I know you're out there. But if you just make a little adjustment and let the Lord get you in the right orbit. Come on. You say, I'm out here. I'm saved. Come on now. But if you just make a little adjustment, come on. How many believe the Lord can fire some rockets on the side of you and just get you right in the right orbit? And then you're receiving and transmitting. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God's got a lot invested in you. I said, God's got a lot invested in you. He wants, he wants you to come on maximum potential. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now in that adjustment, the Lord said to me, if you'll make a little adjustment here, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some things you've never seen before, and your faith will come up to another level. All right? Now, here's what he said. When it comes to the saying part, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, we, we have located the problem. Okay. All right, let's try this. I said, we have located the problem. Come on, until we get an accurate diagnosis, we cannot prescribe. But Jesus said, I'm going to tell you where the problem is, and it's right beneath your nose. Come on, so sometimes you got to look in the mirror and say, all right, don't look down while I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. You're fixing to learn a new language. In other words, instead of talking failure, instead of talking fear, instead of talking weakness, instead of talking defeat, instead of talking lack, you're going to speak words of faith, words of life, words of healing. Well, I trust you enjoyed the word today. We actually enjoyed preaching and teaching, and you can see everybody hearing the word. It's a tremendous response of people praising God at the authority you and I have as believers in speaking the word of God. One of my favorite quotes is, the gospel of Christ is the power of God, and the same power 
that's in the death and resurrection of Christ is in the message. In other words, the devil's just as afraid of the yeah. spoken word of God as he is of the events of the death and resurrection of Christ. So when you speak the word about your redemption and who you are in Christ and about faith in the blood of Jesus and you lift your voice, then demons have to flee. You resist the devil and he will run in fear from you because of the power of the gospel and the power of the word of God. So we encourage you to get our book and get our CDs on teaching on faith that moves mountains, words that move mountains, and listen and read and study, and then live by faith. Apply that word, and you'll see mountains are going to have to move. So I encourage you to get the CDs, listen to them over and over again, and then get the book on opening the door to the supernatural. The word of God is so full of life and it's full of power. So when you just put the word of God in your mouth, it's like God speaking. Yeah. And like you said, it is mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Things change. You lift your voice. And mm -hmm. actually, faith cometh by hearing and hearing. In other words, yeah. it's important to hear the Word again and again. And one of Trenna's favorite scriptures is Psalms 107, verse 20, where it says, He sent His Word, Amen. and it healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That means just the Word of God has the power to move mountains, bring healing, bring deliverance. Mm -hmm. Take that word, act on that word, lift your voice, right. and mountains shall be removed. I always say that, you know, it's wonderful to hear the word of God coming out of somebody else's mouth, mm -hmm. but nothing is as powerful as that word coming out of your mouth. Yeah, Amen. Right. and you take the word, speak it, and I know it'll be a tremendous blessing to you. And so get ready because the next time the word's coming out again and again, you're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. Did you know that your world is actually created by the words that you speak? Your words literally are building blocks yes. for your life and for your future. Learn how the speaking part of faith can actually help frame your life with the book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural and the four CD set, Words That Move Mountains. Your gift of $25 or more will help Mark and Trina train pastors around the world. When you change your voice, you change your life. Order now. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in 100 different languages. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television, through website, social media, and the app, publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. Would you like to join us in this mission to strengthen the body of Christ internationally? Your monthly offering will help pastors and leaders around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org to become a World Missions Partner today. Download the Mark Hankins Ministries app today. On the app, you can watch our TV show, listen to the radio program, read the daily devotional, and see where Mark and Trina will be. You can stay connected to Mark Hankins Ministries wherever you are. Download the app today on any iOS, Android, or Windows device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries and start feeding your faith today.